folks! Welcome back to the Steampunk Desperado channel. I'm Vaughn Troidi and I am the Steampunk Desperado and this is... Mrs. Dean. My lovely wife. Hallway. Mrs. <laughs> you, Desperado, yes. yes. I stepped on her lines she, here. She did. We don't really have lines, it's, it's improv. But anyway, <laughs> Steampunk is the wonderful genre that, of science fiction that deals with the past. Um, usually, particularly the Victorian era, it's a lot of fun things in the, in the vein of Jules Verne and H.G. Wells. But we also love and enjoy Victorian fiction, yes. especially and uh, especially Victorian fantasy type stuff like that classic, A Christmas Carol. Love it. And uh, as Christmas is coming, we want to prepare you for this. We have we have been researching this faithfully. In fact, last Christmas we went and watched 18 versions, all the yes. versions we could find yes. of A Christmas Carol. And reread the novel. And reread the novel so that we knew which were most and least faithful. And so, it's, I mean, Christmas Carol is a cultural icon. I mean, some people say that Charles Dickens actually, actually popularized or solidified our current version of Christmas, which is, which is very interesting. And there's a movie about that, which we haven't seen yet, but need to do that was a movie about Dickens. Uh, the official name of, the, of this novella was A Christmas Carol in Prose, Being a Ghost Story of Christmas. I love those long Victorian titles. I love it. Published in London in 1843. Dickens kind of needed money at the time as he had a, a large and expanding family, a lot of relatives living with him, and luckily for him it was a commercial success. It was adapted by the, for the stage almost immediately, and uh, once movies became in existence, it was adapted again and again and again and again. And hence our our adventure of seeing all all the versions we possibly could, which was kind of a whim. Arliss has these yes. wonderful ideas, <laughs> and she's going to say she coerced me, but I thought it was a good idea from the beginning. So we, as we said, we watched 18 versions. We did. We did. And it, and it was fun. It actually came from my childhood that we always... Um, we either read the novel or, as they became uh, popular on TV, we watched it. Well, so. People have that kind of ritual, like you watch, maybe watch Charlie Brown Christmas, just to be on TV once yes. every year. It was always fun. And so we started by looking for some versions. Actually, it kind of happened by accident because we found some old black and white versions that were pretty awful and, uh, and started thinking about where are the, what are the best ones, what are the worst ones, and so on. So we... These, these ver different versions include animated and live action, of course, mostly live action. And there are some really good ones, some really bad ones, and some that are kind of in between. <laughs> yeah, that, that. We'll come back to You'll that. See. So, we are we differed on our very favorite versions. Arliss's favorite version was Alistair 1951. Sim, 1951. Yeah. It's one that I grew up with. Um, so when we embarked upon watching all these other different adaptations, I thought maybe I would change my mind and find one that um, actually fit better, but actually didn't. I, I actually still remain a fan of uh, Alistair Sim as Scrooge. And he was and a very good Scrooge. Oh, very, very good, good Scrooge. I mean, he's, he's kind of a funny looking guy, which, which kind of fits. Um, and I, one of the things we thought, thought about Scrooge is a lot of portrayals make him really angry. And personally, we think that Scrooge is more apathetic. He just doesn't care. And when he talks about dying to decrease the surplus population, that's because he really doesn't care. Yeah. <laughs> so, he, and he delivers it as a, as a joke, not as, not as a venomous, angry platitude. Exactly. Yeah. So, my favorite... I, I love the Alistair Sim, but my favorite was George C. Scott in 1984. I'm a big fan of that actor. Loved him in Patton, if you remember that. And, and he had a way of making these characters larger than life. And that same thing with Scrooge. And Scrooge, again, Scrooge was not angry. And he did some of the best, the best uh, portrayals in the sense that he's delivering these awful lines as a joke. Mm -hmm. You know, like, let them die. And, and uh, are there no prisons? Are there no workhouses? That sort of and thing. And he actually laughs at the, yeah, at the joke exactly. to himself. And, and I thought that was a and, good... I thought that was and good. afterwards, after he reforms, he becomes he becomes giddy. And, and, and he does a really good job of uh, portraying like a half-crazed, but not over-the-top, uh, version of Scrooge. Absolutely. So we have to go through the rest a little bit more quickly. Because okay. we're going to do 9 of the 18 okay. in this episode. All right. 
So the next one is... The musical, the Scrooge musical with Albert Finney. Um, 1970. 1970. I liked it. It had very memorable songs. It had um, that Oliver Twist flavor to yes. it. Uh, Broadway, uh, it was a Broadway, Broadway play in the 1960s and uh, adapted, uh, adapted to the screen. And uh, we always talk about the one who plays Marley's ghost because that's a, this is a significant part. In this case, it was Alec Guinness. The, the the man who played Obi Wan Kenobi, yes, and it was the most fun because he was kind of a flamboyant, swishy ghost. But we'll talk more about that later. <laughs> he was um, wonderful. He was wonderful, and some great only only musical with songs that people actually remember, mm -hmm. uh, like the nicest thing that anyone's ever done for me. That's about Scrooge dying, yes. by the way. Yeah. Uh, so the next one is one of my favorites from my childhood. Uh, you remember a cartoon character called Mr. Magoo? He was a little bald man, very nearsighted, always running into things and mistaking, mistaking hat racks for people and so on, th that kind of thing. And it was kind of meta in the sense that Magoo would play, it was an actor, so he'd be playing some, he'd be the actor playing some part. In this case, he's playing Scrooge. And it was actually very faithful, believe it or not, being a cartoon. A little bit shortened, because they had to take some, some of the extra out. Uh, but some great songs for kids for kids movie. I love the one where the uh, mortician and so on are singing about mm -hmm. being despicable. <laughs> and uh, uh, fairly faithful. We had, had a hard time finding this, but uh, it was worth it. The uh, next one... Muppet Christmas Carol with Michael Caine. I, I love the Muppets. We and, love the Muppets, yeah. yeah. I've always loved the Muppets, too. And, and uh, if, the, if you remember the Muppet Show, and so on. Now, yeah, Michael Caine was Scrooge. Uh, this was 1992. And Kermit. And Kermit was Bob Cratchit, of course. <laughs> and he was married to Miss Piggy yes. and all that stuff. So, and so, a little bit different. There were two Marleys. Yeah, because they had to do Statler and Waldorf. Right, exactly. the, the grumpy old man who, who uh, heckle the Muppets yes. from the, from the uh, balcony. So they were Marley and Marley. Yes, yeah. And uh, Muppets have a wonderful way, this was part of Henson's genius, I think, and Frank Oz, don't forget him, that they could make fun of something and yet be respectful to the source material, and yet they don't destroy it. They, they make fun of it, but we, that's because we love it. It's like hitting your, your favorite uncle or something like that. It's, it's a, a labor of love, and yes. that's why that's so great. Yes. Now, the next one. Well, I, Jim Carrey. Um, in the 3D adaptation. Mixed feelings about this Very one. Very mixed. Um, Even though it was good. Yeah, he's. I love Jim Carrey. Um, I, I, I think he's he's amazing as an actor and a comedian. He does tend to be a little slapsticky. Yeah. But that's yeah. Jim Carrey. And you so kind of have to accept that. So it's like a 3D animation, a little, yes. over, a little um, creepy, at a first. little motion cap, and you have that uncanny valley issue with the people looking yeah. a little weird. Yeah. You get used to it. Yeah. And. Uh, Carrie does a lot of the voices, does an excellent job. Again, I think some of the slapstick is is a little overwrought, and I would have preferred it wasn't in there, but that's Carrie, that's his signature. The best thing about this was that it was the most faithful of any of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, it absolutely had just about everything from the novella in there, including where the Christmas present takes, takes Scrooge out to see the sailors at sea celebrating Christmas. So uh, I would watch it just for that. Very, very cool, just for that aspect of it. Uh, next we have Scrooged. Yes, with Bill Murray. Um, now this is another one that's meta, as <laughs> yes. we're saying, yes. as, as the millennials would say. Because this is, in a way it's a terrible adaptation, but it's a wonderful one at the same time. Because it's not, it's, Bill Murray is a TV exec, but he's doing Christmas Carol on TV, and he's doing a really awful version of it, mm. which is which is like he's putting hip hop in it and everything. It's just ridiculous, and that's why it's so funny. And so as he's doing this, as he's being a, a real jerk, and and you know his like his ads are so are so over the top that that, that cause old people to have heart attacks, <laughs> and he's very apathetic, and he becomes a new man. So it, it's true to the spirit, even though it's totally different. And Bill Murray is very funny. He's very Look terrific. Look, if you don't mind uh, crude humor, cool. we'll uh, Carol Kane as the ghost of Christmas past uh, is is very funny and is a, is a wonderful keeps little hitting twist. Him. Keeps keeps like yeah. beating him up <laughs> the entire awesome. time. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, next was one that we had a little bit of a disagreement about. Yeah, he's wrong. So we had uh, Patrick Stewart, who you may remember from Star Trek. That's why he's a favorite of mine. He was Captain Picard. Make it so. 
and, and so on. Now he is the best dressed Scrooge I've ever yes, seen. He's got absolutely. a elegant top hat, a wonderful uh, coat and tail. Which Scrooge would be? Yeah, and Scrooge would yes. be an elegantly dressed man because even though he's a cheapskate, he has to look good when he goes to the stock exchange. He's yes. not gonna. He don't, doesn't want to look like he's a homeless guy, which is the way they some of the adaptations portray Scrooge. The problem is that Patrick Stewart doesn't really have the emotional depth that you need on here. And it may be because he's, well, he's a Shakespearean actor, so I don't understand it, but, you know, he, he may have been fearful of ending up in the Royal Hospital for overacting, <laughs> if, you, if you remember Monty Python. And so he definitely was not going to go there. Definitely not. He, he was just, very safe in that yeah, respect. Yes, he, I just didn't feel that he was, um, the character was emotionally invested. He seemed to be very... He was angry and empathetic, but not, uh, but not either enough. Uh, yeah. yeah, he so, was mad for me. Last one in this, in this best of, yes. and uh, it's still it's a fun one, though it's not the greatest. Mickey, was, Mickey Christmas Mickey's Carol. Christmas Carol, 1983. It's short, rather sanitized, but I gotta admit they still have some of the, some of the inappropriate lines, like maybe they should die and and uh, decrease the surplus population. And so I got a hand to Disney for being brave enough to have that in there. Uh, but uh, Mickey is, uh, of course, Scrooge is Scrooge McDuck, uh, of course. <laughs> and uh, Mickey is, of course, Bob Cratchit, and so on. And, and they kind of shoehorn some of the characters in, so that kind of makes it a little awkward, especially Goofy as Marley's Ghost, which is, which is really goofy. To, to be perfectly honest, but it's still it's still it's pretty good. It's, it's not bad. So in summation, we usually do a rating based on gears, a system of five gears, because this is steampunk, and or you know we're talking about steampunk and or Victorian literature, and the the five is the top. And so we would definitely give the, our top two, Alistair Sim and George C. Scott. We would definitely give them five gears yes. out of five. Fantastic, absolutely, absolutely must see on Christmas. Or whenever, you know, in July if you want to. <laughs> and as far as the lower ones, getting down to Patrick Stewart and Mickey, eh, probably three and a half. Mm -hmm. um, because they're still good. They're still watchable. Um, but in part two, we are going to talk about the worst nine out of the 18 that we watched. The very worst. And some of them are maybe worth hate watching, possibly. Yes. Uh, but if you're going to actually don't, these are the kind of movies you don't want to spend any money on. If, the, if it's rentable for 99 cents, that might be okay. Exactly. So, for now, we very much thank you for watching this, for joining us in the Steampunk Desperado channel. I'm Vaughn Troidy. I am the Steampunk Desperado, and this yes. is... Arliss Holloway, Mrs. D. And please uh, go down below and, uh, on, and uh, like and share um, this link, and comment, and whatever, subscribe, all that stuff. And for now, this is the Steampunk Desperado, and Mrs. Desperado saying... Well, come on back soon! <laughs> come on back soon to the Steampunk Desperado channel where the past meets the future and the present is extraordinary. extraordinary. And Merry, Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas!